the gospel reminds us today so that the apostles, disciples, came to him and tried to test Jesus with a question about divorce. And I could sense Jesus trying to dodge that question because he knows that the issue of divorce is not an easy topic. The first question was, can a man write a letter of divorce to his wife? That was what they would, they would ask Jesus. He didn't answer that immediately. And they came back again. Because this is something that they wanted to hear from Jesus, the teacher. But Jesus knew that, uh, like I said earlier, the issue of divorce is not something you can delve into anyhow. Because each divorce case has something that breaks people's heart. If you have encountered people who have this divorce issue, if you tell, if you tell you their stories, you know that both parties, their hearts were broken. And unless you are very close to the family, unless you know the details, you will not be able to say anything that will make sense. And I guess that's why Jesus did not answer it directly. Rather, what he said in the end was, in the beginning, this is how it was made. This was the intention. And then they went forward and said, well, Moses asked us to write a letter of divorce. And Jesus said, well, he did that because of your hardness of heart. Which simply means that Moses recommended that because there was an issue going on. And Jesus also pointed at that. There was an issue going on that led into that. But in the beginning, there was nothing like that. It wasn't the intention. We read something about this issue in the first reading today. When, Jesus, when God said in the, there, is, there is no need for a man to be alone. There is no need for a man to be alone. After creation, after he created man. And he said, I will give him a, a partner. Because he realized that it's always good to work together. It is always good to be two or three, to be bonded together. And that is why he made it very clear. He made a partner so that they can work together. They can participate in creating the domestic church, the family. And then, as you know, he said he created man and, 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 and male and female. And the male has its own qualities. The male has qualities that is not, you cannot see it in that male, that female. So the, these are two human beings with different qualities. But the important thing is that two of them will come together to help one another, to create a family to help build the domestic church. And that is why this was raised to the status of a holy matrimony. The church says it's holy. It is a sacrament. Because not just a sacrament, it's a sacrament where people will gather together to love themselves, male and female, leaving their family, come together to build a different family. In that family, in that family they will share love. They will share kindness. They will also recognize that even though this is a man and this is a woman, each person is unique. The man is unique and the, and the woman is unique. But they can come together. They can work together to build a better family. This is why, how God actually ordained it, how he designed it. But as human beings, we have our own weaknesses. Sometimes what God wants for us is not actually what we end up doing. And that is why this today, as we talk about the marriage, we pray about marriage, and we preach about marriage. We are remind, reminding and praying for all married couples who are together in their marriage, praying that God will continue to sustain them, 
I always believe that there is no marriage that is the perfect marriage. I have never been married, but I know that is true. <laughs> Every marriage has its own issues. And that is why this prayer is very important. We pray for people who are married and living together. We also pray for those who are trying, who are contemplating marrying, going to marriage. Do not be scared, because sometimes we think, with all this chaos in society, am I going to marry at all? We are, we are remembered today that do not be scared. Because if you see the stories of people who have lived a married life, you will discover that it's not impossible. Yes, there will be problem, but it's not impossible. A couple of times I have celebrated people who have lived their 70 years in marriage, 75 years in marriage, here in this parish. That should tell you that it's not impossible. Even here in this church today, I can see many married couples, those who have celebrated their golden jubilee, uh, silver jubilee, and the rest. So it's a, it's a courage, it's hope for the young ones who are thinking about marriage. But it doesn't mean that everything is so pleasant. It's had, it has a lot to do with understanding, it has a lot to do with the sense of knowing that this is a holy thing. You are called to, marriage is a call. The sacrament of marriage is a call. Just like all of us who are priests, we are called to serve as priests. Those who are married are also called to serve as married couples. I always believe that if you are thinking about uh, marriage, any place that you can find love, because the sacrament of uh, marriage is called the sacrament of love. If there is any place you can find love, you find it in marriage. That is where they share it. That's where they bring it out. That's where, they, where we live here at uh, Soffit Court. When I first came, I saw a couple. This, they were in their 80s. But every morning, I see them walk around, coming out from their, from their house, and they walk around the, the street, holding their hands together. I admire them in their old age, and they are walking every morning. As they walk, they discuss. If they don't love each other, they will not do that. If they're in trouble, they will not do that. So marriage is a place where, it's, where you celebrate love. Celebrate the love of one another. It's a place where you celebrate and learn how to listen to people. How to listen. I think God generally or designed that so that we can learn and appreciate one another. That's why he did not just make man and forget about the female. He made the male and created the female with two different characters, two different structures, two different things, and brought them together so that we can learn one another. We can learn from each other and move along to build the family of God. Just like as, as we God created human beings, in the world today we have different kinds of people, different kinds of color of people. That's why he did that because he wants us to see how wonderful it is. When I first came, people were saying, oh, Father Ferdinand speaks with a lot of accents. And I said, that accent remains my own identity. It can never go out. But it also helps you. It helps people actually to train their ears very well. Because if you don't know how to train your ears, you will not be able to listen. It helps you to train your listening skill, to refine your li listening skills. Now you understand me. When I speak, people will understand. I want to believe that, right? <laughs> well, you, are, you have just echoed what I'm saying because you are, you are laughing or shouting. It's an indication you understand me very well. So, but again, the point I'm trying to make, this variation, this multitude of things that God poured out on the world, they are meant for us to learn from it, to complement one another, to understand one another, to learn how to be patient, to learn how to be kind to one another. We find that in marriage. We pray, my dear friends, today for all married couples, for all those who are planning to marry, for all divorced couples, that God may meet them and accompany them in their journey because they are all called and they are all children of God. Amen.